As network operators migrate their networks towards more open, cloud-oriented, multi-vendor architectures, so the introduction of automated processes becomes increasingly important. To find out more about the automation in telecom network domains and in relation to network operations and radio access network disaggregation in particular, I'm talking today with Stefano Capri, Worldwide Service Assurance and RAN Automation Portfolio Lead at Hewlett Packard Enterprises Communications Technology Group. So Stefano, thanks very much for joining us today. Now, with network operations and RAN disaggregation in mind, can you tell us why automation is important for telcos? Thanks for the question and um, good day everyone. Um, to be short, in one sentence is all about uh, OPEX reduction, is reducing the cost of operating the network. If you look at the situation today, operators are forced to still invest a lot in their uh, expansion in the network, a new capacity, new license, but uh, the CAPEX versus OPEX equation is not more sustainable. Uh, OPEX is increasing too much. The cost of operating a legacy environment is still very high. There is a convoluted legacy that needs to be maintained. The know-how is a spread across multiple sites, multiple people, skill set are rare, and uh, when investing in uh, transforming uh, uh, the network with the new technology adoption for cloudification, softwareization, virtualization, then the skill set become even more a problem and uh, the complexity is there. So automation is where there are a lot of expectation to simplify and to reduce uh, the cost of operating the networks. Think about a network where the software is entitled to spot new anomalies, detect uh, uh, misbehavior, uh, foresee capacity degradation, and the cell fill in the best case. So automation is the new path where OPEX needs to be reduced on radio access on the core network in the transport across different domains. That's pretty much uh, why we think automation is important in the telco these days. Okay, and uh, can you be a bit more specific about the expected benefits for telcos from the adoption of automation? Well, first, I think, as I said, is a cost avoidance. So saving in terms of uh, reducing a human touch, human being uh, on something that can be demanded to network to be run. Second important driver and expected benefit is about uh, providing the user with a much better experience in using the network and the accuracy in identifying problems in the network and predict outages, predict issues in the, in the way network is operated. And the third, the equally important, is reducing time to market. So when automation uh, is applied to the full life cycle from uh, design to develop to operate and the same tools are used, then uh, it's, it's obvious that uh, you have reduced time to deploy network functions, to um, deploying workloads, de redeploy things that there might be wrong, and therefore reduce uh, not only the issues, but also the the time to market for new services and new launch of uh, uh, consumer enterprise services. So what is HPE doing in automation and why? Well, HPE is, uh, is been leading the market uh, in, in OSS uh, in the last uh, decades. And uh, automation is not only about uh, technology, it's about, of course, uh, people, process, keeping an equilibrium among these axes. And uh, we know how the network operations uh, are running these days. We know which tools are used when we, we, we need to run a network and when we, need, we, we are sitting at the NOC or the service operation centers. In reality, when we talk about technology, the main goal of HP is to provide uh, not a generic framework, but uh, a, a platform, a solution that provides the benefit, as I just said before, right? Reducing cost to operate the networks and um, increase the time uh, to be flexible and launching new services. So technology-wise, HP decided to put together the best of the assets of uh, the portfolio we have today in assurance, in, uh, in orchestration, and uh, providing ability to detect uh, anomalies quickly, to remediate, to provide the closed loop scenarios to self fill network functions, services, slicing in a best possible way. So we have done that uh, in, uh, in, uh, already in the radio access, with the, the run automation software that I mentioned uh, to you guys back uh, in uh, April 2022, and we're expanding that uh, to the core, the transform layers as well. 
So uh, the disaggregated radio access network is obviously really important to a lot of operators now and automation in that environment. Uh, can you provide us with an update on the progress that HP has made with its RAN automation solution? Uh, who are the expected users of this software and what are the expected benefits for those telcos that adopt this solution? Well, three questions in one. So uh, let me first start to see how we see the market in the radio access network. Uh, what is happening there is not a transformation. I would, I would say it's a revolution, moving away from appliance in the radio access and um, having uh, the software of uh, the software of the radio access uh, running on top of uh, optimized infrastructure, decoupled hardware and software is what is happening today. So you add another level of complexity and you need to have a, a management ability tool set application software that will uh, make life easier to operate end to end the infrastructure and the software sitting on top of that. So um, we announced in Berlin in April last year uh, the, the intention of HP to uh, design, develop and launch the market uh, a run automation software that is basically the SMO, the service management and uh, orchestration solution from uh, the Open Run uh, Alliance software, and that's what we did. We we are now back uh, into the first release that hit the market a few weeks ago. We are generally available in the release 1.0 on the HP Telco Run Automation software. It's a software that uh, combines and offers to the market the best of the tool set and capabilities from the HP portfolio and third party in a pre-integrated uh, software that provides uh, infrastructure management um, provides the uh, ability to handle the full life cycle from design, provisioning, and uh, uh, management in real time of the radio sitting on top of that uh, disaggregated infrastructure. If you think about uh, an environment with uh, 10K, 20K um, uh, different uh, servers uh, uh, in, deployed uh, in, uh, and, and spread across the territory, having a tool set that will mean the human touch for uh, mistakes and potential errors in uh, firmware upgrade on uh, or um, OS uh, BIOS uh, patching on the infrastructure. That's what we're doing. We're working, of course, uh, in a multi-vendor environment. We work in uh, uh, being compliant with the HP ProLiant DDL110, 360, 380, but also with other vendors infrastructure. And the same is aimed to do on the, on the software. We were running today the possibility to uh, deploy and undeploy, configure and optimize software from the main uh, radio access uh, software vendor like uh, Ericsson, Huawei, Nokia, and Samsung, and, and even others. And on top of that, we're offering that solution from the cloud uh, in as a service motion that uh, as the industry is doing there. The, the, the end users, to answer your second question, is uh, are basically people sitting in the NOC, running the operations the radio access, uh, and people doing uh, optimization, configuration, uh, network planning uh, in the engineering department. Expected benefits. So analysts are saying that we can have a saving between 15 to 20 percent uh, on OPEX. Actually, we're talking about an environment that is extremely intensive in terms of CAPEX and OPEX. From our modeling tool, we've taken some scenarios moving from uh, appliance to distributed and decoupled VDU and VCU and centralized uh, VDU and, and uh, VCU. And uh, the, the saving uh, on OPEX is about uh, between 13 to 15 percent on uh, what they're spending on a yearly basis. So if you think uh, cumulatively, in five years' time, we're talking about more than 50 percent OPEX saving in what they spend today on on a yearly basis. That's I think is a very promising and very aligned to the industry trends on what we see today is happening in the in the radio access and the, the cost uh, the cost uh, OPEX uh, driving down is what is the main driver to adopt this uh, run disaggregation. Yes, that would be uh, very welcome from the operator community for sure. Uh, now, what would you say are the key differentiators of HPE's RAN automation software? There are many. Um, let, let's try to be schematic, right? First of all, as I said, uh, is a multi-vendor. Uh, this uh, RAN automation software, uh, it's uh, the SMO, as, uh, as foreseen by the standards, needs to work on uh, different kinds of uh, infrastructure. So we, we have been testing and working, of course, on top of our uh, HP DL110 um, program family with a DL360, 380, but also we work with other vendors, hardware and infrastructure. We're running POC today with also situation where there is not an infrastructure from HP. 
multi-vendor also in terms of uh, hardware. We are able to, to, to handle today uh, the main uh, uh, radio access uh, software vendors. I mentioned Nokia, Ericsson, Huawei, Samsung, and there is no problem to work with others. Uh, we are open in terms of interface, in terms of management, a different kind of uh, infrastructure and software. The second benefit is that uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, IP, there is a lot of uh, tool set and, uh, and intelligence that we have put in this software is a pre-integrated. It comes out of our factory or our development centers uh, with uh, the best of the tools that we have on infra management, on software management, on uh, configuration and optimization for radio access, uh, on orchestration, and all of that are pre-integrated to reduce the time to market and the, the headache in, uh, in, in projects for customers. Another important point, we look at use cases that are not only the, the all round to be, the open round to be, but also the legacy. We focus on use cases in the energy saving, the best use of power consumptions for use of um, optimization on the capacity planning, on the throughput of today's network. And of course, looking at the VRAN as well. So it's a combination a hybrid mode between uh, legacy uh, self-organized networks use cases and uh, VRAN or round to be. Uh, last, very important, and I didn't mention before, this is a solution that we're going to offer managed by HPE from a private cloud or a public cloud, meaning that uh, uh, there is a, there is an, uh, we're going to offer as a service. We're, we're not imposing customers to pay upfront uh, a, a CapEx, a, a huge capa capacity expanding, but uh, we're, we're, we're offering that uh, uh, on a monthly fee and on, on a consumption base. And I think that's a very strong differentiator in the industry these days. Okay, yeah, that certainly fits in with the trends in the industry for sure. Uh, now, are there other relevant examples where HPE software can support telcos on their automation journeys? I think so. We are, um, think about, uh, for instance, a use case where there is a fiber cut um, and uh, the network is uh, capable to detect that uh, issue and uh, route the traffic automatically to another destination or to another routers uh, or fiber, think about uh, a network function that needs to be deployed and because of uh, capacity degradation, it needs to have more uh, clusters, more VMs running uh, to support the expanding capabilities or trending or uh, foreseen capacity expansion. Think about the slicing that uh, needs to be self-healed because of uh, uh, you know capacity, capacity needs. So a network that is able to detect anomalies, to predict incidents, and to self-remediate is what we envision to be the NOA, the Network Operation Automation Solution that uh, we have today in the core and in the transport domain as well. So the same concept of uh, what we have with the run automation software, if we apply to the core network, uh, combining the best of uh, our automation in assurance and in um, orchestration, providing closed loop scenario to self-fill some of the use cases I just mentioned. That's the way that we're moving ahead with this uh, software as a service and a platform-based approach for network operations automation. Uh, well, all of this is uh, really hitting some uh, key points for operators right now as they shift more towards their cloud-based operating platforms and systems. So Stefano, thanks very much for joining us today and giving us an update on what Hewlett Packard Enterprise is doing in automation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.